So now we're going to look at sort of a notorious problem in probability called the birthday problem. So suppose that three people are in a room. What's the probability that there's at least one shared birthday among these three people? So now this, this idea of at least one is kind of tricky. Uh, so the way we're going to tackle this is the idea that the probability of at least one, uh, is easiest to think about through its complement. So what is the complement of at least one shared birthday? Well, the opposite of at least one shared birthday is no shared birthdays. Uh, and so that's the probability we're going to try to find. So let's see, in order for them to, there to not be any shared birthdays, then each person is going to have to have a different birthday. So for the first person in our group, uh, how many different, how many different ways could we pick their birthday? Well, they would have 365 choices, we're gonna ignore leap years here, out of the 365 um, choices for the, um, for the, for the year. Uh, now the second person, in order for them to have a different birthday, then out of the 365, um, days in the year, they're gonna have to have a different one, so they only get 364 choices. Uh, and then our third person in the room, uh, is only gonna get 363 choices. Uh, and so this is the probability of no shared birthday, the probability that each person has a different birthday. Uh, and, and this turns out to be, you'll notice that this first fraction is actually equal to 1. Uh, so this turns out to be about, uh, 0.9918. Uh, again, that's the probability of no shared birthday. So the probability of at least one shared birthday is 1 minus that is, you know, pretty small. Uh, it's about, you know, 0.8 percent, not too big. Uh, let's make our group a little bit bigger now. So suppose we've got five people in the room. Uh, so then the probability of, of at least one shared birthday, again, will be one minus the probability of no shared birthdays. Uh, in order for that to happen, again, the first person gets, you know, can pick any day they want. They aren't, of course, actually picking, but you know what I mean. Uh, they, <laughs> that there's 365 for different ways that this person could have a birthday and not conflict with that person. And we do this for each of our, uh, people in the room. Uh, and that would give us our, our answer. Turns out to be about, uh, 2.7 percent. Uh, but we could simplify this a lot if we notice that the denominator here is 365, uh, to the, to the, we see that this is, um, just 365, uh, p5. So th from 365, there's, uh, how many ways can we pick 5, or how many orderings are there? And in the bottom, we've got 365 multiplied together 5 times, that's 365 to the 5th power. Uh, and computing that, we get exactly the same answer that we had there. Now this is really cool because now if we ask the question, what happens if we put 30 people in the room, uh, what's the probability of, uh, at least one shared birthday? We can answer this pretty easily because we can say, well, it's 1 minus the probability of no shared birthdays. No shared birthdays mean from 365 possible birthdays, we're gonna, how many ways could we pick 30 different birthdays out of, from 365, uh, how many different ways could there be 30 birthdays, including repeats, right? And that's the same idea as our numerator and denominator there. And computing that, that comes out to be 0.706 or 70.6 percent, which is probably gonna, a little bit surprising. That means out of 30 people in a room, there's a 70 percent chance that there's at least one shared birthday in that room.